So in this video, what's gonna happen is this. My editor is in Ohio. I'm in Southern California. I'm gonna upload a 60 gig project with graded clips and he will be able to receive everything and start editing under three minutes. All the grades are gonna be intact. Nothing is gonna be baked and you're gonna witness all of that in here. This is literally a million dollar feature in Resolve 18.6. It makes remote work more accessible than having somebody physically in the same building. Whether you're in India, South Africa, Australia, after watching this video, you can work with anyone anywhere in the world. And as much as it sounds like a turnkey operation, it is far from it, okay? So I did all the dirty work. I went through their entire manual to like figure out every single thing. I went through all of this to find the best practices for you and create a crash course that not only you can watch one time, but you can refer back to. So anytime you hit a hiccup, if you're working with a client that needs some help, you can literally refer them to this video and it will explain everything to them. And the reason why I sound so passionate about this is because it came from a necessity. I have editors that are in Southern California, North Michigan, Ohio, and most of the time it is a mess. We're just spending days and days getting the files back, things are missing. Sometimes they're sending me a bake file. There's a gamma shift, they have to re-render again. There are a trillion things that can go wrong. And this process absolutely eliminated all of those hurdles in a second. Before we begin, question of the week, who graded one of my all-time favorite shows, Netflix's series Dark? And how would you describe the look? The best answer will get a shout out in the next video. And let's roll the intro. All right, so the first step is to create your Blackmagic cloud account and it can be free or there are payment plans. We're gonna go through all of that. So that's the address you're gonna put in and then I'm gonna click on sign up and then let's just go ahead and put in our information. Okay, so you're gonna get the screen and then what we have to do is just go ahead and verify that on your email. So I'm going to verify my account. Once everything is verified, we're gonna come in here and put in our information and uh, hit login. All right, so once you're signed up and logged in, you're gonna be welcome with this screen. And I wanna kind of take you through what is available to you here. So if I click right here, it basically tells me that, hey, you're on a free plan. If you wanna create libraries, you have to pay. But that's okay, because if you are working with the client who owns the paid account, you don't need to own a paid account. And I'm gonna show you how that's gonna work. We're gonna go to settings and let's just get familiar with what we got going on here. So currently, if I click here to upgrade, this is my default plan. I get two gigs of storage. I get to collaborate with one extra person. All right, so I just showed you the talent side where you can work off of the free version. Now I wanna show you the client side. So now I'm logged into my company account where I do have a payment plan. So I'm just gonna click right here and show you what I got going on. So manage plan. So I'm on a $15 a month, 500 gig plan. Right now I'm using 217 gigs and I have three projects uploaded and there are three members and I can have up to 30 members. So now let's move over here and you can see what's going on. So this is my library and these are the three projects inside. Now let's go over to like Resolve and see how to set up everything in here. So inside Resolve, when you log in, it looks like this, right? So it defaults to your local storage and that's where you're gonna have everything. That's your local project library and you can click right here to open this up and you can have multiple project libraries. So I have one for my masterclass FCMDB and I have one for Instagram because there's so much stuff that I grade and keep and I wanna keep those separate. So the pro tip that I can give you about project libraries is to think about it as like, you wanna have one project library per client. So if you're working on a TV show and it has like 24 episodes in the next two years, you wanna have like a full project library and that is going to make sure that you get the best possible experience. Otherwise, if you have one project library and 10,000 projects in there, it's gonna choke your system up. Now what I wanna do is I wanna skip the network part and I wanna go straight to cloud. So as soon as I click here, I'm gonna to have to put in the same information that we put in to create our account. All right, so we're logged into this and this is the current library that I'm working under, but I'm gonna show you how to create a library from scratch. Let's just go there first. So I'm just gonna click on add project library. So now in here, what I can do is I can click on add project library 
and then let's give it a name. So I'm just going to call it test. Region is extremely important and there's not a lot of choices. These are physical servers where the data is going to live. So you want to select a location that is the closest to your editor, your colorist, whatever that needs to be done on the project and whoever is going to be spending the most time inside that project. I'm going to pick Ohio because my editor is in Ohio and luckily they have a server there. So that is kind of crazy. Version, you want to pick the newest version since we're on 18.6. So I'm going to pick that and I'm going to say add. As soon as I do that, it's going to start creating that project library. So just give it a second. And now if I click right here, it's empty right now because everything in here is sort of like read only. You can't really click on anything here. It says like, you know, go back to the app to create a project, but I can click right here. And then it tells you where the region is, where this project is living physically, the data that I'm going to put up and then who is the admin here. And then I can click right here and add my other dummy account that we just created. So let's just say that's my colorist, right? So I'm sharing that with my colorist. I'm going to hit send. And this is what's going to happen on my end. So the request has sent to my colorist right now. All right. Another pro tip that you need to be aware of that people that you share the projects with can delete and modify anything within the library that they have access to. And deleting a person is super simple. You can just hit this little X and that person is gone. So again, if we're here in this library, I can click right here and I can add more people by hitting the share button. I can delete those people. And now in Resolve, we can see that the test library has been created. Okay, so I just went ahead and clicked on it. So that's our test library. Let's start a new project. And then this is very important. Okay, so let's just call it what it is. So I think the project was called GoPro 2 Mini LF, which is a little sneak peek of like one of the videos that are coming out. And then this is very important. Okay, so where do you want this data that Resolve is going to put up and then sync to their servers? Where do you want that data to live? And what I like to do is I like to put it in the same folder as my project. So I'm going to go ahead and select that, but I don't want to get super confusing. So I'm just going to create a folder and call it test. And then inside that test, it's going to throw that in there, but you can put it in the media folder of the root directory of the project. And then these steps are very important too. So share project with multiple users. Yes, that's the whole idea. And then what do you want to sync on the black magic cloud? Like, do we want to sync proxies so they can just, this is the whole process. They can get that in within three minutes and start uploading. Or do we want to do both? The craziest thing that blew my mind is that resolve is so smart that when I select sync proxies and originals, it's going to sync up proxies first within three minutes, this entire project that is about 60 gigs is going to be available for my editor and my colorist to work on right away. OK, so I'm going to pick sync proxies and originals, and then I'm just going to leave the camera settings to don't allow remote camera like we're not dealing with that. OK, so once I hit create, it's going to take me inside here. Looks pretty much the same as a regular project, except you got these options down here. You got three little extra things down here and they're going to make more sense in a second. I'm going to go right here and I'm just going to paste what I brought in. So let, let it decide, let it change the resolution and uh, frame rate. Let me click on assembly. Everything is ready to go because obviously it's living on my local. That's not going to be the case for my editor, but we're going to see what it looks like on my editors. And in a second, look at this. I click right here and it's telling me exactly what's happening. Look at the speed here. This is absolutely insane how fast it like uploads everything like this speed is going to go up like a mother. OK, yesterday I saw like, look at the 74 megabytes per second. If you have a gigabit, which is what I have, like one gig down, one gig up, it is hitting close to the maximum speed, which makes it way faster than any other storage I've used in my entire life. Dropbox, Google Drive is the worst. We transfer is OK. Dropbox is really good. 
nothing comes close to this. We recently did a survey. Majority of you, regardless of the skill set, are struggling with shot matching, skin tones, balancing, and working with 8-bit footage. So I created a one hour long free training that covers all of that. Plus, we'll wrap up the training with an extensive Q&A, and you'll also get a link to download the practice footage, power grades, and some of my personal LUTs. Link to the training is in the description below. Check it out. Let's get back to the video. So now what we're gonna do is this. I'm gonna go in here, open up Resolve. All right, so now on my editor's end, we can just type in the same information that we put on their website, on the cloud website. And then as soon as I hit enter, that's what's gonna happen. So just watch what's happening here. Let's go back to the project here. Click on how much of it is uploaded. So it's almost there, okay? 30 gigs uploaded, 16 more to go, 54% done. And then here we have that project available. So let's double click on it and see what it looks like. So I'm gonna pop it open and it's gonna give you these options, okay? So the first thing is like, hey, where do you wanna save this file? So ideally I would like to have, again, the same root directory on my end too. So everything keep, like stays clean. But here in this example, I'm just gonna dump it in my downloads and I'm gonna say sync proxies and originals here too. Why? Because I'm gonna edit first and then I'm gonna grade on top of it. And I'm gonna do sound design and stuff like that. Not to mention that my client wants me to do the final output. So then I would need the camera original files. And in that case, I'm just gonna hit sync proxies and originals, hit open. And that's based on an actual scenario. Like that's what I'm doing with my editor. Like they're the ones that are doing the final output. I do go in and QC everything here but then they are dealing with like any hiccups that could happen when you're um, uploading. And you see like how the icons changed and now everything is downloading. And if I hover over, it says like downloading. Also, what's really cool that I wanna show you is this. So once I double click and open it, everything is offline, obviously. Don't worry about this because I'm just using a plugin that is not on this computer, but I turned off that node on my main machine. So here, I'm not gonna have any issues. Look at how fast it's coming in, guys. Like this device, is not connected to the internet. Like, look at this. I'm not even connected to the same Wi-Fi. I have two different Wi-Fi's and I'm connected to a different Wi-Fi. So nothing is happening on a network based situation. And we're pulling information from Ohio. Remember the region was set to Ohio. So it's not even Northern California or Southern California. And look how fast these files are coming in. And then if I just click right here, it has already downloaded 10%, which means that because it's prioritizing for proxies, it basically brought in all the major stuff that I need. And if I were to hit play, like right now there's a grade on and that's gonna slow it down. So I'm gonna turn that off. And if I play it back, you can see the playback is in real time. So everything is going through. Obviously the sound is gonna come in in one second. All right, so check it out. Everything is ready to go. If I do a playback, it will be like this. So open that up and it is activated by default. Why is that? Brain is exploded, guys. As we mentioned before on the talents and it's gonna show up under shared and this is the project that we have here. Everything is ready to go. So while I start to work on this as an editor, look at this, in the background, everything is being uploaded. It's going so freaking fast and I'm almost done. Like everything is already here. And at that point I can just turn these off and I can change it to like camera original or proxies. If I'm a colorist, I'll just put it in camera original and start working that way. If I'm an editor, I can just leave it in proxy and keep editing and everything is gonna be done in the background for us. All right, so now let's talk about stuff that's like really easy to miss. And that is this. You see when I click here and I move it around, nothing is happening. So you're probably like, dude, I'm supposed to edit this. I can't do anything. Like what the hell is going on? And that's because you see this little icon it tells you that somebody else is logged into it. So the collaboration is first come, first serve basis. Okay, so whoever is in the project, the timeline gets locked, the bin gets locked, and then all you can see is look at it. You can't modify it if you're not the first. That's not that we can't change that, but I just wanna let you know. See, like I can't move anything. And that makes a lot of sense because if the editor is working on a project, we don't wanna just start going in and start making changes. Like we wanna know who is inside that project, who is making those changes. So all you have to do now, I'm on my main machine. I'm gonna go here and I'm just gonna come out of that project. And as soon as I do that, look immediately in the same second that icon is removed. And now what I can do is, I can click on the project again. So now I can just move that project and start making editorial changes. And now on my end, look at what it's doing. 
So it says WQ. So now my editor is on and I can tell and he's moved some things around, which is why there's a little sync icon that's popping up. So that's telling you that he's making some changes. So timelines are per editor, but grading is per shot. So I can have multiple colorists in the color page grading the shots and it's going to look like this. Now watch this. If I go right here in the color page, I want to make some changes to this shot. Let's just go here. Shot number six, reset that. And I want to, for some reason, bring the exposure down. And I just do this. The beautiful thing about this process is that the changes are not made while I'm making them. The only time this is going to be confirmed, the change that I made and will be saved if I jump to a new shot. As soon as I go to the new shot, that one is now saved and you can see it here. You see that little icon that's popping up right here. That wasn't there before. So now in here, the change is not done yet until I click on this little guy. And as soon as I do, look what's going to happen. Now it darkened. So the change was applied. This is a beautiful setup, meaning that people who are working on sound design, editing and compositing in Fusion, we're not going to be bogged down and bothered by every single change that's being made because that's going to just like choke your system so much. This like allows everybody to kind of just keep working until the change is confirmed. And then another thing that I want to tell you is this. There is another way to unlock the timeline. So like right now, if I go in here on the client end and I grab this and move it around, I can't. Why? Because my editor is currently working in that timeline. So what my editor can do is he can right click and he can force unlock timeline. So as soon as I force unlock timeline, the icon goes away. And now if I click on the timeline again, I should be able to move things around. So that is again, one of the things to kind of keep in mind that th that is another way to do it. But it by default keeps going back to locking mechanism because again, this is how it should be. And now you see that little icon pop up there. So it's locked in. Let's just say, okay, as an editor, because now let's just come out of that, right? So like, I'm just gonna close this timeline out. And then in here, I'm gonna jump back into that timeline. And let's just say I've made a change. I'm just gonna make like a super stupid change, which is going to be just going here, moving the shot, right? So like, that's my edit, I made a change. Now, as a client, I can click on it and then you are gonna update me that, hey, timeline is ready for you to view. So what you can do is right here, check this out. You can go in your edit suite and I can click on edit suite chat and I can just say, edit is ready for you to review. And then look what happens on my end. I get that little notification right here. I can click on it and I see the message. Edit is ready for you to review. And I'm like, whoa, this is amazing. Just look at it, guys. Like there's absolutely zero latency to all of it. And then I go and I make a note. I say, can you close the gap? That comment is already in there. He can see it. But let's just say if I want to double, double, make sure that he sees it. I say markers are in. And then as soon as I do that, I see the message here. Also, just make sure that in your notifications, you turn this on. So by default, it's turned off. So like I'm going to go in and now I'm going to turn on my notifications. So now it will even ping me when I get a message. So we have Slack, iMessages, everything, robust system built in one. Frame.io, who needs that? Any sort of like review service, who needs that? Like, come on. So there you have it, a start to finish guide when working with Blackmagic Cloud. If you enjoyed the video, smash the like button, share it with friends, subscribe to the channel for more awesome stuff like this. Thank you for watching. I'll see you in the next one.